So after my first anatomy lab, um, I really felt like it was such an honor that we were going to learn all of the human body from these people that donated literally everything um, that they had left you know, to us uh, and through their body. Um, I also thought it was really cool that we're going to be dissecting, uh, almost like we're medical examiners on NCIS or something like that. And uh, at the end of it, I thought, wow, uh, it's a lot, and we are going to have a heck of a four months learning the entire thing, uh, and it's going to be one in-depth dissection. After my first anatomy lab, I was extremely overwhelmed. Um, I'd never taken any sort of anatomy class before, whether it was a lecture or even gross anatomy, so I had no clue how I was going to learn everything in the human body in four months. Um, but it gets easier and you learn how to study just like when you first get to medical school. You'll just have to re-teach yourself the best study habits. Um, studying for anatomy is a little bit different, so you just have to try a lot of different ways of studying and find what works best for you. Coming into lab for the first time, I had no idea what to expect. I remember everybody wanted to make the first incision and then two or three hours later, nobody wanted to continue trimming the fat. It gets extremely tiring, but I remember being so excited to eventually one day identify every structure in the human body. The first day I was really nervous. Uh, I had no idea what to expect and it was a really um, important thing for me to feel comfortable. I really wanted to get the most out of that first anatomy lab. Uh, so the first thing I did when I got there was I went over to the pro sections, these pre-dissected bodies that we use to study. Um, and I really just got used to the sights, the smells, um, seeing what a cadaver that is properly dissected looks like. Um, and that really helped stabilize and, uh, myself and get ready for that first cut. What you wear in anatomy is extremely, extremely important. Um, you want to wear scrubs that you're not too crazy about, that you don't care if they get dirty. Maybe you'd want to throw them out at the end. Um, personally, I was upset because I wore my very favorite scrubs and I washed them a million times and no matter what I did, I just couldn't get the anatomy lab smell out of them. So I was very upset to throw them out. Along those lines, make sure you pick your footwear very carefully. You're going to be standing for a very long time, so sneakers are probably best. Um, also, sneakers that you can wash at the end of lab because you never know what's on the floor. Um, girls or guys, if you have long hair, make sure you tie it back. You don't want your hair getting into the cadaver. Um, and make sure you bring a change of clothes because if you're driving to school, which I'm sure most of you are, you don't want to get in your car right after. Um, the smell will linger in your car and you don't know what you were touching and you definitely don't want that to get all over your car. Also. Females, um, if you're going to wear a bra, which you probably should, definitely wear a sports bra. It is a long class. You don't want your bra poking you and being annoying, but also definitely wear a bra that you don't feel too attached to, so you can definitely throw it out at the end of your anatomy session. One great thing about studying for anatomy is that it's extremely, extremely social. Um, when everybody's in the anatomy lab, you have a lot of opportunities to speak with other people, meet people that you didn't get an opportunity to meet prior to that. Um, when you're in your own anatomy lab or any other lab for that matter, everybody's kind of split up because we have such a large class. So this is your opportunity to see those people and interact with those people that you don't have class with all the time. So be sure to find what way works best for you when you're studying. Some people love working in groups, other people love working alone and having their iPod in or whatever. Uh, but find what works best for you. I personally found groups were really helpful and everyone had something different to bring to the table, another useful piece of information that I wouldn't have remembered unless someone else uh, gave it to me. There are a bunch of different resources that you can use. Um, the best one that I found is using an atlas. There are a bunch of different atlases. Um, they're all actually available in the library, so you can look at all of those there and borrow them. They also have a bunch in the lab that you can use. Um, much like learning what type of studying works best for you, you definitely want to see which atlas works best for you. They're all a little different. Some read more like a story. Some are just pictures of the actual cadaver. Some are just maps and flow charts, um, so you really need to look at everything. Um, also, definitely utilize both the faculty and the scholars. They all are experts and they also know which atlases they found were the most useful, not only to them, but also to students who use them in the past. There are many resources you could use within the anatomy lab itself. 
there's the dissector, which will give you a step-by-step -step overview of how to do each dissection. There's the atlas, which will have a more detailed overview of how to identify each structure. And then there's Moore's clinically oriented anatomy, which will help you think clinically and make clinical correlations. A really important app that I like to use was Essentials 5. Um, it's available on the App Store on Apple. I'm sure it's available on um, the, the Google Play or whatever uh, phone you use. I'm not paid by the app. I'm not paid by Apple or anything like that. Um, but it was a really great resource to use alongside the cadavers. It has a 3D model that you can hide or highlight and you can click on a muscle or a bone or anything like that. You can see the distal proximal attachments, blood supply, nerve supply, etc. But it's really important that you use that alongside the cadavers, not just study the app. Another resource that you might find really helpful is actually the Netter's Coloring Book. Um, I'm a very hands-on and visual learner, so for me, whenever I draw something out, I seem to remember it a lot better. Also, drawing it out first helps me visualize it better when I'm looking for a certain structure on the actual cadaver. So, the coloring book is exactly what it says. It's the Netter's coloring book, and you go through and it'll explain, you know, this is this muscle, this is this nerve, this is where it runs, and then you have a chance to actually color it in. Um, on the actual picture so you can see where it lies, where it goes, and everything else that goes along with it. So something that's really important is the Netter's flashcards. They were a really great resource that I used. Um, they have uh, several that are just identified the structure. Others are the muscle, where it is, attachments, innervation, blood supply, basically everything you need to know. And what's nice is that you can flip it over and um, really just see what the structure is first and then have all the answers on the back. Another great resource to use is the recorded prosections on Kaltura. The scholars record prosections during each lab session so that you could look back and see what the lab was about. But if you're the first group, you could go back to last year's prosections to prepare for the upcoming lab. So the scholars are great resources. They are advanced medical students that have stuck around to do these awesome prosections for us. They're the ones that actually prepare these prosections to make sure that we understand the full anatomy that's going on. So please use them as amazing resources. That's what they are. They are very knowledgeable in the lessons that they teach. Don't forget to take a break once in a while to stretch during lab. You could be standing for really long periods of time and your muscles can get tight. If you really want to practice, you could try and name the muscles that you're stretching too. Make sure you bring a snack. Labs could get pretty long, but no eating in the lab. When you're studying, try to use mnemonics. Um, it makes it a lot easier to remember the different branches of arteries and veins and nerves. Um, usually the sillier the mnemonic is, actually the better you'll remember. Um, you can make mnemonics with friends, or there are a bunch of mnemonics that you can find online or even in some of the atlases. So we made uh, this game, um, a bunch of people had it, um, it kind of stole, stole the idea from a couple people, um, but it was a name that structure game, and after you're done personally studying, it's a great way to review and prep for the test, because what you do is you take three or four pins, um, you get a group of people, maybe three, four, five people together, you're going to go around to the different bodies um, and have one person at a time pin things, and while that person's pinning, have everyone else look away. And when they're done pinning, they come back and they say, all right, name that structure. What's the attachment of that? You know, what's the innervation or anything like that? And that's a great way to prep for the way the, the question's going to be asked on the practical as well. So definitely look into that when you're done personally studying. So for every muscle and structure um, and every section of the body, uh, Dr. Sunius gave this really good advice and so did a lot of the other professors. Have a picture of what is there in mind. Um, know not only what structure is there, but know the landmarks that are associated with it. Be able to look at the back and say, that's the erector spinae muscle, that's, you know, something else. Um, it's a really important way that you can narrow and eliminate um, answer choices in your own mind as you're going through the, uh, the practical. One thing that really helped me out was designating a certain time in the week to prepare for the upcoming lab. Uh, I found it super helpful to um, have that knowledge to build on so that I can get the most out of the lab. Also, lab work is a group effort, so you want to make sure that you're prepared so that your group can also get the most out of the lab as well. So every table is different and you want to make sure that you know all the bodies that are around. Um, a big thing is when we have so many bodies, we see so many different things. So know the most common. Um, it's a great way to learn not only your own cadaver, but bounce around and learn someone else's. It's intense and it's a lot to handle, but when you really 
start figuring out the intricacy of it all and um, how everything in the body works together, it's, it's really fascinating. So be sure to sleep before you actually take the practical. Um, it's something that's very important and often overlooked. Uh, I myself was a culprit of staying in the anatomy lab past 1 a.m. Um, don't advise it and uh, don't condone it, don't do it. Um, so be sure to get enough sleep, it's really important, it helps you recall the things the day after. Uh, and on top of that, study important things before you go to sleep. You remember them better in the morning and that's definitely been proven through my study habits as well. Learning how to properly assemble and detach a scalpel is an extremely important and useful skill to acquire in the anatomy lab. So as you can see here, we have the handle and the blade. The handle has an angle right here that you want to match up with the angle on the blade. There's also a ridge on the side of the handle that you want to slide into the blade. So we're going to open. Come in through the bottom and slide it in. And then push down on a hard surface until you hear the snap. To detach the blade, we want to pull up and then push out and make sure we dispose of it in the red sharps container. Thanks for watching. Click on these links if you'd like to learn more on how to prep for your first year of med school.